So guys, as you can see, it is working like a charm. On the top row, we have our increment counter and the bottom row is a decrement counter. Increment counter goes from 0 to 100 on the first row and the decrement will go from 100 to 0 and once the decrement gets to 0 and increment gets to 100, it will go all over again. Now see what happens. See it started all over again. Now if you go to the programming, you will see that it's simple code. We just initialize the LCD here. LCD's files are, uh, lines are initialized and then we took uh, variables for the increment and decrement and then we took the string variables as well to display on the LCD. LCD initialization command, then we remove the cursor and then we create the LCD. Then we use a do while loop for the counter and we started the counter for increment and decrement. Then we converted the value counted value to string and then we displayed the string on the LCD and then we again reset the increment and decrement, simple as that. Now if you take a look, this programming gives us this result and uh, that's all. Hello guys, welcome to learning microcontrollers. In this video, I will show you how you can run multiple counters on a 16 cross 2 LM016 LCD using PIC16 F877A microcontroller. So let's get started. So guys, as you can see, this is our PIC16 F877A microcontroller having 40 pins, it's a DIP version. And this is the LM016 16 cross 2 LCD we are gonna use here. So let's do the connection. To connect this LCD with a PIG, you will need a 3-pin 10 kilo ohm variable resistor. This will be used to adjust the contrast of the LCD. To adjust the contrast, you will simply rotate this knob. So you can adjust the contrast as per your environment. Now guys, let's do the connections. As you can see, this potentiometer has 3 pins. It is mentioned on the body as well, 1, 2, and 3. And this LCD has 16 pins, 1 to 16 from left to right if you hold it like this. Now you common the pin number five, 1 and 5 of the LCD, then you co connect it to the pin number 1 of the potentiometer. From there you send it to the common ground. In this way your potentiometer gets grounded and your LCD gets grounded. Now guys, you connect pin number 3 of the LCD with the pin number 2 of the potentiometer, that is the adjustable contrast pin of the LCD. Now guys, pin number 2 of the LCD will go to the pin number 3 of the potentiometer. From there you send it to the 5 volt supply of the pick like this. In this way, PIC gets a 5 volt, potentiometer gets a 5 volt, and the LCD gets a 5 volt. Now guys, this pin number 4 is RS pin. You can connect it to any available digital input output pin of the PIC. I'm going to use the pin number 15, that is pin number C0. Now pin number 6 is the enable pin. Connect it to the uh, any available digital input output pin. I'm going to use the pin number C1. For the pin number 11 of the LCD, that is data pin 4, I'm going to connect it to the pin number C2. For data pin 5 of the LCD, I'm going to connect it to the pin number D2. For data pin 6, I will connect it to the pin number D3. And for the data pin 7, I will connect it to the pin number C4 of the uh, PIC16 F877A like this. Now guys, pin number 15 and 16 are for the LCD backlights. If your LCD do have a backlight only, then you are going to need to connect these two pins. If your LCD don't have a backlight, then leave them as it is. So pin number 15 is the backlight positive pin connected to the 5 volt supply. And pin number 16 is for the ground of the uh, LCD backlight, just like this, connected to the ground of the 5 volt supply. So I'm going to power up the backlight as well from the PIX power supply. Now guys, these four pins, pin number 7, 8, 9, and 10, they are for uh, the 8-bit mode while we are using this LCD in the 4-bit mode, so we do not need them. So leave them floating. Now guys, what's going to happen is that I will program this PIX in such a way that that two counters will appear on the screen, one on the first row and other one on the second row. The first one will start from 0 to 100 and the bottom one will start from uh, opposite. Like uh, top in the first row, we will have an increment counter. At the same time, in the second row, we will have a decrement counter. They will keep on running like this. That one will increment by one in the first row and the second one will decrement by one in the second row like this. And the finally it will reach 99 and this will reach 1 and now it will start all over again. The first row will go 0 and the bottom one will go 100. So it will be like 0 to 100 and 100 to 0 at the same time. So guys, let me introduce you to the hardware before we move on to the programming. So guys, this over here is the hardware as you can see. This is our 16 cross 2 LM016 LCD and uh, the wirings are as shown in the presentation. So let's get to our micro C4 to get to get started with the programming.
so guys this is our micro c4 pick let me zoom in so you guys can see better it's version 7.2.0 you can use the latest version as well 7.6.0 as well all will do fine so click on file new new project this window pops up new project visit click on let me move this okay click on next write the name of the project i write multi counters lm016 lcd tutorial by lm learning microcontroller so this is the path where the files will be created and the microcontroller I'm gonna use is PIC16 FA77A clock. The crystal connected at the pin number 13 and 14 pin of your PIC16 FA77A. I have a 20 megahertz crystal over there, so I will write 20 here. Now, guys, click on next. Okay, uh, let me change the directory to some new. Okay, this one will do fine. Okay, click on next and finish. So guys, this window pops up. Before you do anything else, first of all, save your work. For that, press Control S. Now this saves the work. Now go to the right, expand the library, micro -E libraries. Here you have this LCD library. We will go. We are gonna need it. So you check mark this. And another library is the conversion library that we are gonna need here because we cannot display the integers directly on the screen. We will use this library to convert the integers into the strings. We can display the strings on the LCD. So first of all, we initialize LCD, go to the LCD library, expand it. Here you have this LCD I in IT command. Double click on it on this. This window pops up. And in the example here, you copy this these commands till here. Now you go back to your programming window. Above the void main, you paste these lines like this. Now guys, first of all, what he is showing here is that RS he has declared at B4, while we are using C0. For EN, he is using B5, while we are using C1. For data pin 7, he is using B3, while we are using, for data pin 7, we are using C4. So, I write C4 here for data pin 7. For data pin 6, he is using P2 and we are using data pin 6, D3. We are using D3. So, it will be D3. For data pin 5, he is using B1. And we are using data pin 5 is here D2. So we are using D2. And for data pin 4, he is using B0 while we are using C, C2. So you can verify these using the programming. So th that is all. Let me recheck. Okay, they are good. And now guys, for the pin directions, do the same for the RS, it's C0 as then above, C0, that is for the pin layout, and this is for the pin direction, C0, and for the EN, we have C1, for the data pin 7, we have C4, for data pin 6, we have D3, for data pin 5, we have D2, and for data pin 4, we have C2. Now guys, initialize the LCD, go to the right, in the LCD library, you have this command, LCD INIT, double click on this, Go down, copy this command from here, go back, paste it in the void main one time loop like this. Now guys, give some initialization delay. 100 will do fine. This is not necessary to give, give this delay, but I always suggest you give it in the one time loop. Now guys, again, go to the right here. You can remove the cursor if you want. LCD by default has a cursor and I don't like the cursor. I'm going to remove it. If you want to keep it, you can keep it. Go to the LCD CMD command library. Here you have this command in the example here. You copy this LCD CMD LCD clear. This command clears the screen. Just remove whatever is in the brackets. Now go to the command table, double click on this LCD CMD. And here you have this LCD available LCD command. Now go down, look for the command called clear turn off cursor, this command. Now you copy this and go back, paste it in, within the brackets like this. Now guys, give some initialization delay. This command will remove the cursor. Delay is not important here, but I always suggest you give it in the one time loop. Now guys, the cursor is removed. Now we clear the screen for first time run that if there are any ragbag values, the LCD will get cleared. So we clear the screen, LCD clear. Now guys, we can go forever, forever loop, LCD is initialized. So let's get to the forever loop, write down while one. Forever loop starts here, ends here. Now inside it, 
uh, first of all we will need a counter so we are going to use a do while loop you can use the for loop as well or you can go without loop as well but i always suggest you use a loop so i use a do while loop this is the syntax of the do while loop it will be the condition now we will need variables for both the increment and the decrement i take an integer variable uh, i call it increment and i take a decree decree uh, another variable that is integer and that is a decrement now we cannot display this directly on the lcd we will need some uh, like uh, char variables as well uh, an array of char is a string so strings we will use the conversion library to convert these integers into strings to display them on the lcd so i write char increment and uh, an array of 10 will do fine although it's more than enough and then char decrement an array of 10 for both and this uh, i name it as increment 1 and decrement 1 so this will store whatever the integer is in the string form to display on the lcd and this will store whatever the decrement integer uh, is in string form to display on the lcd give the proper brackets so we have our variables now go down and first of all we write the increment variable increment equals to increment plus one so increment will increment by one i give some initialization delay 20 will do fine okay now simply copy paste this here decrement is equals to decrement minus one see that is increasing by one and the decrement is decreasing by one that's all now initial value initially i give the initial values as well initially increment is equal to zero and decrement equals to 100 like it will start from 100 to 0 and this will start from 0 to 100 like this now guys uh, we have our increment as well decrement as well we give the condition so since there are 100 values so if the increment counter is less than 100 see it will keep on repeating until increment do not reaches the value of 100 as soon as it reaches 100 it will uh, uh, go out of the loop and once it's out of the loop increment will become zero and decrement will come go back to the initial state that is 100 so again the initial states will be given to both the variables so initial states are here increment equals to zero and decrement equals to 100 now it will start all over again so guys now we have our increments now we convert them to a string to display on the lcd for that go to the right in the conversion library this expand it here you have i enter the string command this one double click on it this window pops up you copy this command here in the example now go back paste it below this like this first of all i convert the increment value i increment equals to whatever the char variable is so that is increment one whatever is in this increment a variable in integer form will be converted into a string and will be stored in this increment one variable in string form so that's all now we can display this on the lcd give some delay like this now again do this for the second one as well so that is for the decrement decrement to decrement one that's all so this is the increment value converted into string and decrement value converted into string into string now we display it on the lcd now go to the right to the lcd library and in the lcd library go down you have this command lcd out double click on it here from the example copy this command go back paste it below this here like this now first of all start writing from the first row first column what it should write it should write whatever is this increment value is so we should write it in the center as shown in the presentation so i make it like uh, four or five whatever you prefer okay just uh, it's fine now for the second second one that is a decrement again do the same uh, start writing from the second row fourth column decrement value so increment will be on the first row and decrement will be on the second row now uh, delay is always preferred so i give it here as well because for these cheap lcds you need delay because lcd don't have enough good response time so there is a possibility that you will get a rag bag value on the lcd if you do not give the delays for good lcds and for the usb to ttl as well you do not need the delays at all now guys uh, the data will be there on the screen now we uh, need to see the data so this delay is important like we will keep on displaying the data on the lcd for how long 
So we simply modify this. Like LCD data will be there on the LCD four. Like I make it 200, 200 millisecond, and then again it will go out, and again the data will be reset. So we are not clearing the LCD. We will try to overwrite. If the overwriting works, then that's fine. Okay, let's build the code. Okay, it's built successfully. No error. Let's go to the Picket Three Programmer tool. Here, select the microcontroller Pic16 F77A. Click on File, Import Hex File, and this is the file we just created. Double click on it and click on Write. Okay, the new file is being written. Let's zoom out and go to the hardware. Okay, let it write the new file. Okay, it's written. Now I will power up the circuit using the Picket Three Programmer tool and see what happens. Click on On. See, it's working like a charm. 14, 15, C. On the first row, we have the increment counter, and on the bottom row, we have the decrement counter. Now, once the bottom row goes to zero and the top row goes to 100, it will reset, like it will start all over again. So, let's see, does it does that happen or not? See, now guys, this technique is very useful, especially when you are making uh, some energy monitoring system or something like that. You have to display like more than one variables on the LCD. So in that case, you will use this technique. So this LCD is not easy to program with such accuracy, but you can see that it can be done. It's cheap and easily available. So that's how you are gonna program it. So guys, this is simple as that. If you guys have any questions, you can ask me in the comment. And uh, thank you very much for your time, guys. And uh, have a nice day. We'll see you in the next video.